This project was made possible by a generous grant from the Virginia and Alfred Harrell Foundation and all of SJV Water subscribers. When are we getting water back in the Kern River? That's the number one question I'm asked when I tell people what I do for a living. My name is Lois Henry, and I cover water in California's San Joaquin Valley. Yes, that's all I write about, and my most recurring topic is the Kern River. This is the first in a series of videos looking at who owns the river and how it operates, which are collectively known as the law of the river. Though the Kern River typically has at least some water year round, it's mostly dry shortly after it hits the valley floor. It's divvied up by various entities to irrigate crops and for drinking water, which leaves the riverbed dry through Bakersfield. It wasn't always like this. In fact, the river used to have water through town most of the time. You may even have heard a song about it by one of Bakersfield's most famous sons, Merle Haggard. Oh, I'll never swim Kern River again. So what happened? That's what we'll examine through this series of videos on my website, sjvwater.org. We'll look at who owns the river, why it's dry, what the current state hearings on the river are all about, and of course, when or if water will ever come back to the river. It all has to do with this thing called the law of the river. Let's start with some Kern River basics. The Kern River drains approximately 2,400 square miles of the Sierra Nevadas from the backside of Mount Whitney all the way down to the Kern River Canyon just east of Bakersfield. Back before the area was settled, the river would fan out from the mouth of the canyon like a loose fire hose, cutting numerous branches. Generally, though, it heads west and southwest, except in really big water years when it would spill north into the old Tulare Lake. The river supported large populations of Native Americans all along its run, as well as an abundance of wildlife. That would change, of course, as newcomers populated the area, first coming for gold in the 1850s and later for oil after its discovery along the Kern River in 1899. The rush for land, and the water to make it productive, has always been ongoing. By the 1870s, two of California's biggest land barons, James Ben Alley Hagen and Henry Miller, had gobbled up vast tracts of land in Kern County. When Hagen moved river water to irrigate lands near what is now Wasco, Miller sued. Hagen said he had been using the water first, so had rights of, quote, prior appropriation. Miller said because his lands were along the river, he had, quote, riparian rights. The case took 10 years and went all the way up to the Supreme Court, which ruled in favor of Miller. But the justices directed the case be further reviewed. Rather than spend more money on lawyers, Miller and Hagen cut a deal. Miller would get one-third of the river for part of the year, and Hagen and the other upstream users would get the rest. That agreement, signed on July 28, 1888, is still in use today and serves as the foundation of the law of the river. As time went on, companies came and went, rights were sold, and public water districts were formed on lands that had been controlled by individuals. The law of the river became more layered. Then in 2007, some water rights were deemed forfeited by one of the Kern River rights holders. 
Now the State Water Resources Control Board is trying to sort out what that forfeiture and other questions about excess or high flow water will mean for the future of the river. Is there water available in the Kern River? If so, who will get it? And what role will the law of the river play in this new chapter?